Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Gabriel and today we'll be talking about the Free Folk Raiders. Before I get started painting though, I just want to point out there's uh, some awkward mold lines, especially on the fur um, edging their hoods. So what I did was I took the edge of a file and just kind of um, uh, fit it into the grooves uh, created by the, te the natural fur texture. And I'm just breaking up the line of the mold line there just so um, it becomes basically invisible. There will be parts of the mold line still remaining, but they'll be so small or they'll blend in with the fur texture itself that it really won't be noticeable. The main thing is that you don't want some kind of inorganic um, shape, uh, which is the mold line here, um, interfering with the natural look of the fur texture. So for base coating, I'm just using a uh, a uh, flat brown from Vallejo mixed with a yellow ochre also from Vallejo and um, essentially I'm just getting a very warm uh, brown color you could use a cooler color more desaturated brown um, this is a little slightly different from the box art uh, I looked up uh, Inuit and Inuit is uh, a people from Canada and Alaska so it's a very cold climate and I noticed the color is uh, slightly different and I kind of like that aesthetic with like a warmer brown. I think that would contrast with some of the cooler elements we'll be putting in. And so basically I just coated the whole miniature. Um, it seems very uh, thin, but after two coats it's pretty opaque. So um, I just uh, did that pretty quickly. At this stage I'm uh, base coating uh, the fur that's on their thighs and around their upper body and um, uh, on the edge of their hood. Uh, some models also have fur that's uh, around their boots as well. And so I'm just using kind of a paler uh, brown-yellow here. It's kind of similar to the base color, just a lot more desaturated because of how much uh, white I added. At this point, I'm using a wash to completely coat the miniature. It's a 50-50 mix of flesh wash and strong tone from Army Painter. And essentially, what I'm getting is um, a pretty brown and red uh, mix that's not too strong. And what this allows me to do is pick out the texture in some areas and kind of helps if I miss certain spots. It kind of finishes it off for me. I don't have to um, spend worry that I missed out too much. Um, this is uh, a little concerning in some parts because um, washes, especially over very large flat areas, do not work well. So um, you might want to completely avoid or just uh, severely thin down uh, the wash you're using in certain areas. But you can also use this to your advantage because if it's very thin, it adds just a slightly kind of doppled effect and you'll just notal, notice very slight tonal variations that you wouldn't normally get if you tried painting it conventionally with um, just uh, matte acrylic paint. So um, throwing the wash in there does help but just keep in mind that you don't want ugly rings and stuff you have to cover up later and kind of tide marks or coffee stains as it's called where um, you've had some issues with uh, you know, not thinning it down enough. Here I'm just laying a uh, base coat down of uh, Bugman's Glow on the skin. And this is just to help define where the, the skin ends and begins. And um, that just makes it easier when you're working on other parts of the model. And here I'm doing it this, uh, the same with uh, the other model.
For this part of the model, I'm uh, adding a wolf gray from Army Painter, and I'm going to use this color for the loincloth, and then a slightly darker version for their axes and clubs. Uh, this allows me to create um, a nice contrast between the very warm uh, and rich uh, kind of main fur coverings they have, and then these uh, smaller sections. And so um, I'll be working pretty uh, fast and uh, rough on these uh, parts, but um, it kind of works with their aesthetic. For this next section, um, it's just more base coating. This time I'm using kind of a creamy ivory color. Um, you'll see uh, how I mixed it was a little more difficult than um, just using an ivory straight out of the bottle, but uh, that'll be in you know a minute or so. Uh, so um, there's quite a few parts of the model I'll be covering with this. You have the, the foot wrappings, the wrappings around the wrists, uh, the bone and the wrappings on the weapon, and then these large uh, strips of cloth that kind of wind around their waist and some of them ac across their chest as well. And so um, I just decided that I wanted something that kind of uh, was still warm with uh, the um, f larger fur area. It still appeared natural, but it was still a little different. So um, there's some kind of undershades and, and different colors mixed in that make it um, a little different from that a kind of brighter fur color that's um, you know around there uh, around the hood and on the um, boots and uh, you know that upper chest area so even though they might look a little different the where they come from is is uh, pretty different for this section we'll be looking at my palette so um, the purple color I mixed was created from the flat brown and the uh, blue and then we'll be adding some yellow ochre into that to make it a little lighter and that'll be the main color for the wrappings. The purple will be more of a shade for it and then um, that brighter color to the left I mix in even more yellow ochre and white and that'll be our uh, highlights. Now we'll be shading the main wrapping. Um, first I'm going to use a pretty thin down version of that purple color you saw and that'll be basically just coating the entire thing and this will give us a really strong um, sort of uh, sh shadows especially between the uh, cloth uh, sections and then we'll be uh, working on those uh, flatter areas with um, more of that base color and then with um, increasing levels of highlight and so uh, this will give us a very effective and high contrast uh, look that isn't a lot of work as you can see it doesn't take very long to build up those highlights and um, really work it in and um, the shading was pretty much a single step it was um, just coating it with the darker color, go back in with the mid-tone, blend in the lighter colors, and then if you want to go back you can even highlight it further and darken it further, but um, I found it was effective enough. And I'm really much, pretty much doing the same thing with um, the other sections, though I approach the bones a little differently. Um, I mixed in a little more uh, flat brown and kind of gave them a little warmer color um, and a little bit less blue and I kind of highlighted them differently um, instead of just kind of uh, going over those uh, strips I kind of focused more on the the shape of the bone itself and it seemed to work pretty effectively but of course you can use uh, various colors uh, to differentiate the bone and the cloth but I thought I could just kind of bang them out in one go so that's what I did. So at this point I'm uh, working on the main clothing 
And so we'll be transitioning uh, from our highlight of uh, pure yellow ochre all the way down to flat brown with a bit of black in it. And so the way I went about this was pretty much completely wet blending. So I'll just lay down some uh, brighter uh, uh, color, a little bit brighter than the base color I used. I'll go in with the base color, then um, pretty much pure brown, then a little bit of that darker brown I mentioned. And so uh, what I'm doing is just smoothing out any kind of weird looking areas and cleaning stuff off. So you can see that really awful looking tide mark from the wash that was what I was talking about earlier. And if you've, you've probably seen that before in your models, if you used washes. So on some section like that, it's really not ideal. And I probably should have just gotten mo rid of most of the wash, but I kind of uh, was working a little too fast. So that's a danger with washes that you have to be mindful where you put it and mindful of uh, where they're going. So um, I kind of cleaned that up a little bit and blended it in. And then I'm just uh, working in some colors. As you could see, I noticed the exposure was a little low, so I wanted to change that. But um, uh, really what I'm doing is just trying to make the model look more interesting. So those upper areas should just have uh, more of a yellow ochre and those darkers, darker areas I mean, um, you just add in a little bit of that a pretty dark brown and it really changes the way the model looks. Makes it much more interesting, much more exciting, and it's just a good way to um, clean up any spots you missed when you did the initial base coat. And the wash that you can see is useful because it's already developed some of the shadows and I'm just strengthening those shadows and then um, building those highlights up from there and so um, because of how many models you'll be painting uh, really you don't want to do more than just kind of quickly uh, blend and kind of fix problems and kind of just run through them quickly so you know maybe for uh, your raid leader you'd want to put a little little more extra effort but for the stock standard people it's mostly about fixing mistakes just quickly throwing in some blends throwing in some contrast you don't have to worry about it being smooth because um nice kind of weird changes it shouldn't be harsh lines but kind of natural strange variations looks good if it looks very inorganic then you have an issue but if it's not a perfectly smooth blend, but it, it looks organic, then you should keep it. Um, but always remember, build up your contrast. It will look much better if you do. You know, you, you if you like what you did with the wash, then do it uh, by, you know, blending in even darker colors, even lighter colors, you know. Just keep working through it and you'll get happier and happier. So, no, make yourself happier. Now it comes to the fur. And I have to admit, I was actually a little nervous getting into this because I wasn't really sure how the heck I was gonna approach this kind of long, furry, weird texture, you know? I mean, it's kind of like human hair, but I don't know, it just seemed a little off-putting to me, but um, I figured out something that made me uh, pretty happy. So I start off uh, by reinforcing the base coat after it was washed down. And I accomplished this by just using a fine brush and just kind of going through that texture, making sure I didn't uh, cover the shadowed areas too much. And then I went in with uh, brighter and brighter colors by just mixing in more and more white and using the very fine uh, point just to create some very sharp lines. And it might not be very apparent on video, but um, this is creating kind of a... Uh, pretty natural look by creating very fine lines and kind of adding that uh, adding to that texture and uh, a little trick I threw in was I used a pretty much a pure black and I kind of made a bunch of you know just lines in there like random pieces were um, just you know straight black 
and I did this with a hood by just um, dotting in some um, little black spots and so uh, why did I do this well I felt like it needed some contrast and when I was looking at those Inuit uh, photos I saw some of the fur they had was actually um, kind of speckled with black dots and I thought you know maybe I should throw that in and I was pretty happy with how it looked so if you want to kind of mix it up by doing something like that I highly recommend it I was quite satisfied with the end result but you just have to remember keep the paint flowing and don't become impatient um, make sure you're not scraping the paint off at any of these stages you should always be wiping and saying okay it's very shy, uh, fine, very controlled, it's flowing, it's not too thin that it'll break, a uh, break apart. Uh, so just um, keep that in mind. And if the black isn't black enough, then just leave it, let it dry, and just go over it again with that uh, same black line, those same black lines, and it'll reinforce itself and become uh, very strong. So don't get impatient and just muck up all the work you did. Um, and also make sure that when you're um, uh, doing this that you you don't get it too far um, onto the, the fur cloak. It's okay if it gets a little messy and a little a few strands, but if it really just like mucks up all that uh, work you did before, it's like, you know, just remember be patient and be in control. And then for those sections, um, like the fur around the the hood of the cloak and the fur around the the um the uh, shoes the boots the wrappings whatever you want to call it i pretty much did the same process of um just uh, catching those texture the, uh, the texture of the fur with the base coat and then building up with finer and finer layers but just so um you uh, note this um don't go all the way down when you're making those lines and what I mean by this is don't um, make a very fine line that goes across because if it's just a bunch of straight lines down, it's going to become very noticeable. What you want is kind of a random uh, texture and a random pattern. So make sure when you go through that you just do each layer on its own. It may seem tedious, but it really helps sell the effect. And of course, if it ever feels like it's too dark, or, or too light you can always just work in more so if it feels it goes too light just add in a little bit of um, uh, like a darker brown and just kind of wash it in like I did now we're coming to the stage where uh, we're edge highlighting the uh, cloak so I'm using uh, just a bright uh, pale color. It's pretty similar to the base coat I used on those uh, first sections we just did. And I'm just running the edge of the uh, brush along um, those those various uh, edges of the cloak. Um, just keep in mind that you still want it to be pretty thin even if the edge is pretty ragged and you can also pick out little holes and stuff modeled in. Don't be afraid to move the model around to be more comfortable. I mean I don't normally put it in that position but you know it's much better than doing these hand gymnastics I'm doing now so don't do that keep yourself comfortable and controlled just get those um, nice edges uh, highlighted and it really will improve the way your model looks and um, I also just highlighted those stitches on the arms quickly you can highlight various portions like that wrapping uh, near his face and that sort of thing And then at this uh, stage, it's a little out of focus, and I apologize for that. But uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just using that color to create a bunch of very fine lines and scrapes like, um, you know, bushes and whatnot. We're kind of uh, tearing at the cloak and creating these little marks. And that really, I think, makes a nice uh, weathered and textured look. Now at this point we're working on the wolf gray sections. So for the uh, cloth, I'm just pushing a little bit of that darker color in the, the middle there. Then I do the medium tone, the lighter tone, and 
You can see I'm doing it very quick. You might call it hastily, but um, you know, this is a bit of a speed painting thing going on here. So, uh, you know, I'm just quickly kind of marking in uh, sections and just, you know, creating a bit of texture. And so here on the uh, stone axe, I'm just uh, using a pretty dark color, mid-tone, lighter tones. Make sure it's not too blobby. It kind of has a kind of rough texture. You can achieve this effect by using a fine brush and stippling and doing careful highlights, but I feel like this works kind of the same. Um, so I would say for your box standard guys, just, you know, run with it. As you can see how quickly I'm working and just by, you know, sucking up paint with your finger, just going in, randomly touching it and, you know, kind of creating that general kind of correct look. If it looks really off, just let it dry, repaint it. But, you know, the, the point is that we're supposed to be very quick and effective here. So as you can see, I'm doing the same exact thing, dark, mid, lighter, and it's kind of catching some points, kind of washing over some points, and it kind of creates a nice um, variation in color and it, um, I think, works pretty effectively for um, our purposes of getting a pretty quick and pretty good tabletop standard. So nothing too fancy, as you can see. Even though this is sped up, it's just look how, how quickly it is. And I basically did no work on the stone after this. I'm not lying. I really didn't do much after this. So really, you know, this is something anyone can do to, you know, kind of just get what they're looking for and bang it out, you know. Don't worry about creating uh, something too complex, too time-consuming. Skin, skin, skin. Man. You know why I used to paint Necrons? Because they didn't have any skin. Anyway, uh, let's get started with what I'm doing here. So, first of all, I'm using this uh, kind of weird-looking color. It's um, uh, the Bugman's Glow but I mixed in royal blue from Vallejo and it created this very dark, almost frostbitten look. And so as you can see, I'm covering quite a bit of the model with this and well, not quite a bit of the skin, I should say. And essentially this is going to contrast quite a bit with our lighter and slightly warm um, highlights that we're gonna be um, applying. So I kind of just put that in to, as kind of a wash, you know, similar to the um, uh, you know, main fur that we did. Now, um, I'm applying Kisla Flesh with, which is quite, um, uh, a bright tone. So what you may want to do is step it up a little slowly. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of your choice. I think, um, it's definitely good to go 50, 50 Bugman's Glow Kisla Flesh, hit most of the major areas that aren't in shadow and uh, completely avoid um, those those shadow areas because you really want that frostbite to show through in the end and that'll come kind of come back later. So um, as you can see, this was way too messy. So I just wiped it off, got it dry again, and then I'm just reapplying the, um, the layers of, of skin. And so even though you might not think, you know, it's such a small part of the model. Why do we have to worry about skin? It's because if it doesn't look natural, it's just going to be so ugly and wrong. And so just by doing a few careful steps, you can really make it look a lot better. So um, we're, we're really just building and building um, those highlights up slowly. So um, just hitting those, those more exposed areas. And because these uh, the free folk are especially pale, I'm really going to build those highlights up quite a bit. So um, I'll be even using a few early highlight tones on, on um, sections you normally wouldn't do. So like those, the downturn fingers um, on that fist right there, I'm going to be highlighting those a little bit um, because of how pale they are. And so to really get that paleness across, you're going to be highlighting quite a large area, but it's still really important to use a fine brush for this to have a lot of control um, and have the paint flowing, you know, it should be um, running nicely off the brush. 
I uh, use um, old uh, papers from school or whatnot, and I just um, use that to wipe the paint off the brush. Um, and this controls how much water you have, how much paint you have, and so you really get something like that where it's hitting exactly, it's staying where it is, it's the right consistency, right opacity, it's, it's really what you want. So mastering that may take a, a, a little bit, but I mean, I haven't been painting for that long, and I certainly think you folks can do it. And so we're just building up that Kislev, and I'm basically just adding um, pure white into the mix, but uh, you could go with like a, a slightly warm white, slightly cool white, depending on how you want to highlight it. But um, I'm just hitting those areas um, and just making sure that there aren't like odd spots where you have a uh, Kislev um, and then a uh, straight to Bugman's glow. It's you really want to have this blended out, even on the hands where it's such a small area. Make sure you don't have any noticeable uh, sections that are just very awkward to look at. Um, and it, it's just something that's going to stick with you and you just want to make sure you do it right the first time. So always make sure your layers are thin. You know, as you can see, I just keep going back and back and back, building up those highlights. And don't worry if you mess up with your highlights because what happens is when the paint is so thin, a damp brush is, will just completely erase um, the, the last layer you did. And that's perfectly fine, right? So if you find that, you know, it, it, it really, really just is bungled up, just let it dry and paint over it. Or if it's, you know, just applied, then just, you know, wipe it off. I think that the hands were much easier to paint because of how exposed they are, especially when the, the face is in the hood. I found I kept kind of missing and, and hitting places I didn't want. And so, um, you know, just wipe it off, wait for it to dry, do it again. So, um, as you can see, I'm just kind of picking out where the areas of skin aren't going to be shaded by the hood. And I'm just um, making them quite bright. And also just to note, in case you go over the... Um, the shade, the shade, just it's always it's it's fine, but if you notice that, um, it's really going to look odd if you just have like kids level a bunch of highlight tones. You really want to have a little bit of Bugman's and that kind of deep purplish frost bitten tone. And so, as I'm building it up in the in the cracks between the fingers, um, like just below the cheekbones, kind of hidden around the edges of the face. That's where we're going to see that very dark color. And so you're still going to have a lot of contrast. Um, and you can build that up more and more if you want. Um, which I think uh, you should definitely should. Like uh, with the raid leader, I'm definitely um, building up that highlight and being very careful about not erasing that shadow. And if you do, just reapply it because it really makes the face work. If it's just very bright and, and kind of just it just will become very flat looking and you don't want that. You really want to have a really strong shadow. And you might say, well, pale skin doesn't have shadow. Well, think about white cloth, you know, white cloth can become almost pitch black, you know, if, you know, the light isn't hitting it. And so that's the same thing with pale skin um, below the cheek there. That's kind of um, blocked by the cheekbone and the, the hair that's hanging down. That's like pretty much pure of, frostbite color and that makes it really work uh, when we're uh, painting it and as you can see I'm using my the nail on my thumb as just like a little bit of, te of a tester so if you really want to just double check quickly you can just wipe it across and say okay it's very thin it's not super um, watery that sort of thing you're good to go and as just a little bonus I'm throwing in some Bugmans into the open mouths of some of them. I mean, it doesn't really matter, um, but, you know, just make sure those areas are painted. Because if it's a weird color, you know, you're going to you're gonna feel a little awkward. So, you know, just make sure you have those right um, things. And um, as you can see, or maybe as you can't see at this point, um, you, might, you might just think I'm not doing anything. I don't have anything on my brush, but... Actually, 
I'm just using um, some very thin glazes here. And so it might be hard to tell, but uh, those initial ones were kind of a, a very thin yellow ochre. And it's basically just to add a little bit of yellow um, tinting to the forehead and the top of the hands. And I'm just adding a little bit of red to the cheeks and the nose. It might be a little un uh, hard to see, but um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm making it super thin until it's incredibly watery. Um, and then I just drain most of the water out and just add a teeny bit. And if you wanna add more, you just glaze in um, just another layer and you glaze in another layer until you get a nice, maybe a little ruddiness going, a little bit of a yellowness from the sun, that sort of thing. Now we're getting onto hair and um, all its implications. And there aren't many, if, if I'm honest. You can, at this stage with just uh, some quick work, we can make it look um, pretty darn good. So uh, we're just base coating it and the different base coat colors I created um, was just with a few different um, uh, colors. So um, essentially I, um, took out my flat brown, then I took a little section off and I mixed it with a little bit of yellow ochre. That was a brighter, uh, more yellowish hair color. Took a different part, a section of the brown, mixed in with a little black, dark, uh, dark brown hair. Then I took a little bit of that flat brown off, mixed it with a little bit of red, now we have a red head. And then maybe I mixed in uh, some brown into the yellow ochre to make some extra bright hair. and. With all the hairs being unique in color, it really helps make them feel like living people. If it's all just one color or just a couple colors, it really looks odd. So if you do that, it's going to make them all look completely different. It's really surprising. And now, as you can see, I've already gotten uh, ahead of myself and started highlighting um, the technique of doing this is pretty simple. Just have a very fine tip brush. Um, just uh, be conscious of where you're highlighting and just use brighter and brighter colors. I just used yellow ochre to basically brighten up most of them. And if it was already pretty bright, then I just used uh, some additional white. And so uh, for the raid leader, I'll be spending a little bit of extra time with the hair. Um, so I'm picking out some highlight uh, sections um, and so this is uh, kind of a brown with a bunch of yellow ochre in it. Um, and you can just see I'm building up the contrast here. And so um, it's this is kind of that base coat kind of was like a contrast paint from Games Workshop or Citadel. And um, this is essentially just amplifying it. So I'm going to come in with like a darker brown and just hit those kind of lower sections um, and then for the highlight areas I'm just gonna bring in more yellow more white very thin consistency and just um, kind of sharpen it up and just pick out those little hair uh, the, that hair texture you can see and so with the darker color I'm going in between the texture and with the lighter color um, I'm going side on so just angling the brush really makes it straightforward if you use the length of your brush and follow along the groove, you're going to be painting inside. And if you go perpendicular and paint across, you're going to be hitting the crest of the texture. It's that simple. So I'll just be working through here, build, uh, building up the shadow a little bit and then building up the highlights and kind of focusing them a little bit more. Well, that about wraps it up for this one. I, I have to apologize for being about a week late. Um, these took a little bit longer than I expected. And 
I was a little bit busier than I thought. You know, you always think that, you know, you're done with the model, but, you know, always remember there's something you forgot. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, as you've noticed, they're not based quite yet. So that's mainly due to all my materials being um, the other place I live. So I'll have to grab them in the near future. I don't have many snow products, so I'll have to go out and buy a few of those, uh, play around with them, and maybe I'll show them in a video. But in the next week or so, I'll get a lot more stuff painted, get a lot more filming done, and yeah, I hope you uh, took some stuff away from this and learned some new things, new techniques, and uh, you know, stay happy, stay healthy, keep painting. See you for the next one.